Greetings, I'm Nasser Amash, one of the adult congenital heart disease specialists at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm going to talk to you today about partial anomalous palm venous connection. Anomalous palm venous connections are rare, simple congenital heart defects when they occur in isolation. However, they, in the majority of patients, they can be associated with more congenital heart disease. And these could be atrial septal defect, especially sinus venous atrial septal defect, or it could be more complex disease such as single ventricle tetralogy of hello. For the rest of the lecture today, I'm going to talk about partial anomalous palmar venous connection. The most important thing is to identify when you need to suspect partial anomalous palmar venous connections. You suspect it when you don't see the normal palmar venous connection. In a normal heart, you typically have two pulmonary veins emptying the left lung and two or three pulmonary veins emptying the right lung. And you can see that on echocardiography from the suprasternal notch with the crab view. This is the right pulmonary artery. This is the aorta. And you can see the left atrium with the different veins emptying. You can see that also on CT scan and MRI. Another reason to suspect Partial anomalous pulmonary venous connection is the presence of an atrial septal defect, especially sinus venosus defect, where there are more than 80% of these defects are associated with anomalous pulmonary venous connection of the right upper lung, and less so secondum defect. It's also important to look for the pulmonary veins whenever you have unexplained right ventricular enlargement on echocardiography, CT scan, or MRI because the most common reasons for a right ventricular enlargement are atrial septal defects followed by partial anomalous pulmonary venous connection. So you have to identify all those veins if you see RV enlargement. You also have to look for veins if you have a very small atrial septal defect or a patent foramen ovale and a big RV. A small ASD or a patent foramen ovale will not explain a big, big right ventricle. So if it's a huge ventricle and you see a PFO or an AST, you have to look for other causes for the RV enlargement, including partial anomalous palmar venous connection. 80% of anomalous pulmonary veins empty into the SVC right atrium or IBC. So right-sided anomalous pulmonary venous connection account for around 80%. 20% of anomalous vein will come from the left lung sometimes from the left upper vein or left upper and lower pulmonary vein, draining into a vertical vein, into the anomalous vein, then SVC right atrium right ventricle. So all of these veins will cause volume overload of the right heart chamber where the right ventricle enlargement, increased pulmonary blood flow, similar to, to atrial septal defects. So the hemodynamics are very similar to the atrial septal defects. How do we identify them? Transthoracic echocardiography is an excellent technique to identify left-sided pulmonary vein. This is a patient of mine, 18 year old, who has a small atrial septal defect, but a large, large right ventricle. And you, this is when you look for pulmonary veins. So the left-sided veins are identified from the suprasternal window. You identify the transverse aortic arch the anomalous vein is on the top, and you go to short axis and put color flow signal coming from the left lung, and you can see there's a big vertical vein would flow into the anomalous vein, emptying into that into the SVC. So you'll see it's a very similar to the di diagram I'm showing you here on the left. Again, it's transthoracic echo, suprasternal notch window, and a short axis at the level of the aortic uh, arch. For the right-sided veins, although you can see them sometimes on transthoracic echocardiogram, the best technique will be CT scan, MRI, or transvagal echocardiogram. And the main abnormality on the transvagal echocardiogram, as we wrote about in this paper in Jack in 1997, is the deformity of the SVC caused by the anomalous pulmonary venous connection into, into it. So if you do a transvagal echocardiogram in a patient with an anomalous right upper pulmonary vein into the SVC, you'll identify on short axis that the SVC is no more triangular, but it's deformed, and you have the anomalous pulmonary vein emptying into it. 
compared to the normal heart shown in the lower figure and the lower uh, video clip, where the SVC is disconnected from the anomalous vein, and you can see that here. That's the SVC, that's the right pulmonary artery, that's the aorta, and you can see the pulmonary vein, the right side of the pulmonary vein is not connected. You see there's a tissue between the two. When there's a connection, you see, don't see any tissue between the upper pulmonary vein and the superior vena cava. And you can do color flow Doppler or contrast imaging and confirm that. Anomalous pulmonary venous connection can be also noted on CT scan and MRI. So this is an anomalous pulmonary vein emptying into the SVC. And you can see that on MRI imaging. You can see that all the anomalous left-sided vein are also identified on MRI imaging. And you can, I'm going to go slowly over that. So you see this is a vein emptying up into, through a vertical vein, connecting into the SVC and all the way down. Here we go. That's the SVC and the anomalous vein into the SVC. Again, let's do it again. Let's backward. So that's the vein, the vertical vein, going up, connecting with enamored vein into the SVC. Anomalous right lower, inf right lower or inferior pulmonary vein connecting into the IVC or scimitar syndrome can be seen on echo or on CT or MRI. On echo, it's a subcostal view. Here, this is a nice CT scan that shows right-sided pulmonary vein emptying into the IVC at the level of the diaphragm. CT and MR are excellent diagnostic techniques to use to identify anomalous pulmonary veins, especially if you don't see them on transthoracic echocardiogram or transesophageal echo. Remember, on chest X-ray in patients with scimitar syndrome, Instead, in addition to the scimitar, you have the heart silhouette is shifted to the right because of dysplasia and hypoplasia of the right lobe of the lung. Like atrial septal defect, anomalous pulmonary venous connection might require surgical repair whenever there is RV volume overload or in the presence of associated symptoms of exertional dyspnea or fatigue. The presentation of anomalous pulmonary venous connection in adult, which is partial anomalous pulmonary venous connection is similar to that of atrial septal defect. For example, if you have somebody with an ASD and the right anomalous pulmonary venous connection, you see a graphic on the left, you see this atrial septal defect, you see the anomalous vein empty into the SVC. And what the surgeons do is baffle those anomalous vein into the left atrium through the atrial septal defect and they have to enlarge the superior vena cava on the top or transect it and connect it to the right atrial appendage. If patient does not have an, an atrial septal defect, they'll have to create a defect to channel that vein. Obviously, when these patients come back for imaging, you have to make sure that of the patency of the venous connection, both the pulmonary venous connection and the systemic venous connection, make sure the SVC is not obstructed and there is no residual leak. So take home message about anomalous pulmonary venous connection, and here again I'm talking partial anomalous pulmonary venous connection in adult, is that you should suspect, suspect it when there is unexplained right ventricular enlargement on echocardiography, CT scan, or MRI, or if you have an atriceptal defect, especially sinus venous ASD. If you don't feel comfortable with imaging the veins using one technique, you should look for another technique such as CT, such as CT scan, MRI, or angiography if needed. Most patients, most physicians feel very comfortable using trans, uh, trans thoracic and transvaginal echocardiogram with the technique to identify them. I consider surgical repair whenever you have volume overload of the right heart chambers. But the story doesn't end there because after surgery, you need to re-image again and make sure those baffles and the connections made at the time of the operation are going well without residual leak or stenosis. And again, here that 
multi-imaging is very important, especially with CT and MR after surgical intervention. If you have any question, please feel free to email me at amash.nasr at mayo.edu. Thank you for your attention.